A charity has different goals than a for-profit organization and is therefore run differently. A for-profit organization uses hired employees to make a profit for its owners. A charity, on the other hand, is a not-for-profit that is usually comprised of volunteers who work together towards a positive goal. They often rely on donations from communities and individuals, and they help those who are less fortunate than others. However, despite these differences, the HR practices used in a charity are very similar to the HR practices used in a for-profit organization. Guide Dog to the Blind fits the definition of a charity perfectly. They are supported entirely through private donations and use those donations to provide everything they do from room and board for puppy and human students to live during training and all support services free of charge to blind or visually impaired students they take on. Guide Dogs for the Blind was started by two individuals, Lewis Merrihew and Don Donaldson, who recognized the need to help wounded servicemen who would come back from World War II without their sight. One of their first guide dogs was a German Shepherd named Blondie, who was rescued from a Pasadena dog pound and was paired with their first graduate, Sergeant Leonard Folk. Today, Guide Dogs is based in San Rafael. They have a second campus located in Oregon and provide dogs and training to the U.S. and Canada. They now only use Labrador Retrievers, Golden Retrievers, and a mix between the two. Though much has changed, their strategic goal remains the same. Provide enhanced mobility to qualified individuals through partnership with dogs whose unique skills are developed and nurtured by dedicated volunteers and a professional staff. The professional staff includes instructors, counselors, veterinarians, and follow-up staff. The volunteers include informational speakers and puppy raising clubs. Puppy raising groups are comprised of three types of individuals, professional field representatives, group leaders, and puppy raisers. The field representatives are the ones who give directions, support, and training to the team leaders, and the team leaders use that information to train, monitor, and evaluate the puppy raisers and their puppies. The team leader and puppy raisers meet at team meetings that occur about every two weeks or so, and they share information with each other, including insights, experiences, and techniques learned and discovered while raising the puppies. Puppy raiser training begins as soon as the potential raiser decides to join the group. A new team member can't become a puppy raiser until they meet certain requirements. The first requirement is that they have to attend every meeting for six months. This is used to prove to guide dogs that the potential puppy raiser has the dedication it takes to care and raise for a puppy for the 12 to 20 month period that is needed. After the potential raiser has been in the group for about three months, they are allowed to puppy sit for a specified number of days, usually anywhere between one and seven. The puppy is then taken back by its original raiser, and the team leader questions the sitter about what happened while the sitter was taking care of the puppy. If the team leader determines that the sitter has performed adequately, they start allowing the sitter to take puppies for longer periods of time, but usually no longer than two weeks. All of this is done to determine that the potential raiser can take care of a puppy and obey the rules set by guide dogs. Then after the required six month trial period is completed, the raiser must fill out paperwork and allow guide dogs to perform a background check. And once all of that is completed, the team leader and the team leader says that they are ready. The new raiser receives their puppy. However, training doesn't stop there. The trainer must then attend at least 50% of the meetings every year in order to keep their puppy. Therefore, they are constantly receiving training on how to train and raise their puppy. The Raisers specifically use the meetings to share their stories of difficulties that they have encountered while raising puppies. I remember my sister's first dog, Rianne. The dog was extremely headstrong and would not stop barking no matter what we did. Another Raiser in the group actually had a similar situation with her first puppy and offered us a little bit of advice. She said we should put Listerine in a spray bottle and every time Rianne barked, we were supposed to spray her with it. I guess the smell and taste are usually rather unpleasant to dogs, 
and so it was supposed to be a negative type of reinforcement training. However, it didn't really work for us. In fact, the dog actually started to bark just so she would be sprayed. She apparently really liked the taste. Well, the fact that this dog was going against what had worked for every other dog led one of the other razors to note that most yellow females tended to be on the crazy side. Despite attending team meetings and getting all of the training and support from the team and the leaders, some dogs end up failing. Of course, guide dogs doesn't like the term failing, so they invented another term called career changed. It basically means that a dog has gone from being a puppy in training to being a regular house dog. Unfortunately, my sister's first dog ended up being career changed for behavioral problems. No matter what anyone did, the dog refused to be trained. This didn't mean that my sister was removed from the program, though. In fact, she ended up receiving another puppy about a month or two later. In guide dog's eyes, if a puppy ends up failing because of a personality or medical problem, the razor is seen as having gained more knowledge and is considered wiser and better equipped to raise another puppy. However, this does not mean that guide dogs never remove a razor from the program. I remember in my first group, there was one person who was kicked out of the program. Now, a razor is actually required to train and care for a puppy, but Within that, there are subtext requirements, one of which is to protect the puppy from any dangers that may present themselves. In this case, the razor had gone over to a friend's house and taken his puppy with him. This friend happened to have a lot of marijuana laying around the house, and the puppy got into it. By the time the razor noticed what his puppy was doing, it had already eaten over a pound of marijuana. The puppy had gotten extremely ill and had to be rushed to the emergency care center where the vet reported the issue to guide dogs and got the, the authorities involved. Because the razor had failed to protect his puppy, and the fact that he had actually severely harmed the puppy, he was removed from the group and placed on a type of blacklist, which means that he could never join another puppy raising group again, nor could he adopt a puppy from a career changed puppy from guide dogs. Sometimes it's not always possible for a razor to protect their puppy. There was one razor in my first team who had to move to a new house in the same city less than a month after receiving his puppy. While the move itself was not a problem, it turned out that the new house's backyard carried a disease called Parvo. Parvo is a very contagious and deadly disease for dogs, and the puppy actually had to be quarantined for months. The family wasn't able to move again, and even though the house could be cleaned of it, the process takes a lot of time. The razor was not removed from the program, nor was he blacklisted, but he wasn't able to keep the puppy. In fact, he wasn't allowed to have any puppies in that home again, because even though the house can be cleansed, the organization didn't want to risk it. I would like to take a minute to introduce you to my guide dog puppy, Columbo. Columbo is a career changed guide dog which means, of course, that he was removed from the program. Columbo wasn't removed from the program because of anything that I did, or even a medical issue. In fact, it was a personality issue that caused him to fail. See, Columbo actually suffered from severe anxiety and depression. Uh, whenever he was handed off to another razor, he would have his nose to the ground and his tail between his legs, and would not be comfortable no matter what anybody did. The anxiety and depression actually started to manifest itself in a physical way. He was starting to get ill every single day. So they actually ended up failing him or career changing him from the program because those are not things that can be handled or even fixed in his case. My examples show dogs who've been career changed, or raisers who have been removed from the program or not allowed to raise another puppy, doesn't mean that there was no value gained from these experiences. In fact, the raisers themselves and the other members of the group became wiser for the experience, which makes guide dogs as a company wiser and better equipped to accomplish their strategic goal. 
In the end, it's not always the dogs that pass that help train the new razors. It's actually the experiences that come from the dogs who gave their razors problems or who were forced to change careers that give the most useful experience. While there is a formal hierarchy of training in guide dogs, this formal training doesn't usually touch the razors. In fact, it's a type of informal training that makes the razors better at what they do. The team meetings are actually a word of mouth type of interaction with the other group members. And this is how the razors learn how to better themselves and help their puppies pass that final formal training. It is said that it takes a village to raise a child, and this is an idea that guide dogs takes to heart. Without the team meetings and all of the members working together, a razor would be left in the dark on how to deal with problems that arise with their puppies. It is only through this collaborative effort that razors learn new insights and receive the help they might need in an emergency. If a razor can't do something, or if for some reason they can no longer take care of their puppy, another razor will step in to assist or take over if need be.